What's good, party people? This is your friendly neighbor, Chad the Maverick, back again with another video. And um, thank you all for showing up for my last video, The Astrology 101. This is going to be the second installment um, where we're going to talk about the houses and the planets. Um, anybody who wanted to know, my services are down in the description. Right now, I'm having a sale for 33% off of every reading that I have. And um, the code for that's going to be Valentine. It expires sometime next week, so take advantage of it while you can and while I have enough time to really break down people's charts and do a bunch of readings. So, yeah. Anyway, without further ado, let's start on a video. So, the houses, right? I'm trying to think of the most simple way to put the houses. Without the houses, the zodiac signs would not exist. But each zodiac sign was born from a house. But from that house is the reason why the zodiac sign has certain characteristics in the first place. Cool. So now there's 12 houses and there's 12 signs. With that being said, I'm gonna break down the houses individually and what signs they correlate with in a bit. But, so, let me think of an example. You can have your sun sign be in a particular house and act more like whatever sign correlates with that house than maybe the sign that it says that you are. You know what I mean? Um, it's one of those things that's hard to verbalize once you physically look at it and you can correlate where your houses are in your chart with what planets are there and what signs are there, you'll be able to piece those things together. If anyone has any trouble with that, message me and I will let you know and we can have that conversation. But I do want to just break down the houses and the planets and the planets that they correlate with as best as possible. Now, before I get into it and get the details, I'm breaking these things down energetically. So, phone ringing, but I'm breaking these things down energetically. So when you stop and understand that the energy of the houses play a larger role than the sign, you'll start to see how the sign that you act out is like within the confinement of that house energy it's the best way for me to put it right now but um like i said any questions message me let me know we can speak on it i'm really open to trying to share this um i guess knowledge or studied material as much as possible so yeah um i have my notes here actually i think the mars shifted in the taurus so now i'm forced to like slow down and write things down yeah, oh, whatever. So, let's start off with the first house. So, the first house. The first house is ruled by the planet Mars, right? But the thing when it comes to the first house is that the sign Aries was birthed from the first house. And what the first house represents for your chart and who you are is your rising sign or your ascendant, right? With that being said, these this energy and this house represents yourself as a person. What your mind's ego says is you. So, for example, I guess the best way to put it is that self, right? So, I'm Chad. That's that the I am Chad is the first house portion. You get what I mean? So, it also represents your personality. Your first house or your rising sign is also the energy signature of your aura and how your aura plays out and how other people see and view and receive your aura. So that's a huge thing to like pay attention to. So your first house is super important. The energies in your first house are important because that's the first feeling that people will ever get from you before they even have a chance to speak to you. So it's really important. Um, 
it answers the question. The first house answers the question, who are you? You know, and it also is how your mind registers your physical existence. So like I said, I am Chad, but even if I didn't correlate myself with like my name, Chad is who I am from what other people will see and portray. So that's why the rising sign is important because it's yourself, it's you. It's your inner, it's your, it's your outer facets that derive from your inner portion. And that's the aura that's coming from the inside of you to the outside of you. So keep that in mind. Um, also, it's the ruler of the head, but in that case, it also rules the mind. So that's another thing. So let me go to the second house, right? The second house is going to be the house that's ruled... Oh, the first house ruled by Mars. I don't know if I said that before. But the second house is ruled by Venus, which is the planet of love, beauty, etc. But it's also ruled by the Earth itself, like planet Earth. So where we live on, unless you're watching this somewhere else. But that's all. Then you better leave a comment if you're from somewhere else. But um, for sure, with that being said, it represents how we garner our personal values, how we view um, currency, how we view money, how we decide to get money, how we are secure with the things that we deem valuable. It also represents any form of investments. Anything that you want to invest in is a slow process that it goes through because you are deciding to fixate your you're, you're deciding to fixate something on something and with that being said you want to watch it grow and watch it expand over time but the thing about it is that you need to let it grow over time so that's why it's about commitment when it comes to it investments commitment security these are all things that are ruled by the second house and so from the second house is the birthplace of the sign Taurus. And that's why Taurus generally carry these values as a sign. You get where I'm coming from? I hope so. But um next house. Let's let's go through these. The third house. The third house is ruled by Mercury. It's the house of communication. So, for example, this, the fact that I'm speaking in general and I'm speaking about information and facts that I've received through other conversation and through me reading in books, through me um, – let's just keep it right there. Just the fact that I, like, received and analyzed – or I received this information to begin with and now I'm sharing it out. That's the third house. The third house is just general communication. Um it also is how you use the information that you receive. That's a huge thing. It rules any form of thought that is shared externally. So the third house isn't necessarily about just knowing or something like that. Sometimes it definitely just has to do with the actual, like what's banter. It's, the third house is more banter. Because you're now you're able to speak to and relate to one another and gain information and intel from that conversation. Um, so it also rules both sides of the story. That's another thing. So and with that being said, this is the ruler of Gemini. And or where Gemin the Gemini sign was birthed from the third house. Um, also short distance travel, like, oh, I'm about to go to the mall a couple blocks down or oh I'm about to walk down the street to the store these are things that are ruled by that it's just these are quick things and quick exchanges as well so like anything that has to do with um if you buy something from a, the store down the street that's a third house type of um energy so yeah now I'm gonna cut the third I'm gonna cut off right here for a second so the first second and third house 
these are three things that we need base level as people living human experiences. These are like three major things. It's the self, what do you find valuable, and what do you need to preserve yourself? And the third house is how do you communicate with that? So the first three houses tie together pretty well. Um, they're the first three houses to begin with. That's how we live out this experience. So now I'm gonna go to the fourth and fifth house. And the best way for me to put the fourth and the fifth house from what I've just analyzed is um using my third house <laughs> is um the fourth house i nicknamed it the pull in the fifth house i nicknamed it the push now i'm going to explain so the fourth house itself is ruled by the moon and the fourth house represents the origin of emotion where emotion where's your first emotional ties generally come from is represented by the fourth house. That's why it represents the mother in any form of classic astrology, is because it's just the birthplace of where your emotion comes from. And generally, the first time you feel or you understand what feeling is, is inside the womb. But um, what the fourth house represents more than anything else is psychic nature, right? And it represents receptivity. So it's the psychic nature and the receptivity of Emotion. Just, I'm going to go with emotion, right? This also represents your soul family. And those that you resonate with on an emotional scale and on a level where it's like, oh, I've received what you said. I feel you. That's what the fourth house represents. Um, also, is the feminine energy and the feminine nature of the fourth house comes from here as well. Um, this is the where you kind of download information to your heart. It's like through the fourth house. I hope that makes sense for people. Um, the fifth house. The fifth house represents the push. This is the other end of it. The fourth and fifth house in my head is like yin and yang, right? It's like how we view yin and yang for the most part. And so the fifth house, which is the sun and the moon, you feel me? So the fifth house, right, is the push. And the push is ruled by the sun. With that being said, oh, the fourth house um, is the birthplace of cancer, by the way. I missed that. But the fifth house represents creativity, presentation, outward expression, external passion, masculine nature, and it's the house of courage and showing your heart through living through your heart. So the fifth house is where is the birthplace of Leo. But with that being said, the fifth house is the push of anything that you kind of receive from the fourth house. So you receive the emotion and the psychic and all that, the the mysticalness of the fourth house and the soul power of the fourth house, but you push it out through you being like, hey, I'm on camera right now. I'm expressing this, da 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 da. That's where like the fifth house is. And um, this has a quick example. Moving on. So now the next two houses I'm gonna talk about are the sixth house and the seventh house. And with that being said, the sixth house is ruled by Mercury, but it's also ruled by the Earth itself, right? So this is the house that represents lifestyle, day-to-day -day tasks, things you want to keep consistent, like your health or your routines. Um, it's the caregiving house as well. This is the house of I'm going to take care of blah, 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 or take care of this person. Um, also a house that brings about natural remedies, and it rules the nerves and how to ease those nerves. So people that are sixth house generally are nervy type people until they understand how to use that nervous energy. And usually it involves helping other people. And this is the birthplace of the sign Virgo. And that's why Virgo carry out these energies. Next house, seventh house. The seventh house is the house of partnership. It's ruled by Venus. And it rules or represents relationships, romance, connections to other people going half to half and half. Um, also, intellect and balance between one another, charm. But on the flip end of that, it's also open enemies. And by that being said, these are the people that outwardly don't like you, 
but even when even if they don't like you they're still in a way connected to you and go half and half of maybe how they feel and those are the people that you kind of like they're they're very adamant about saying i don't like this person you know, and they'll go to war with you for no reason. But that's that's something that the seventh house also represents. And the zodiac sign for that is Libra. So the best way to put the sixth and seventh house is that it's like the caregiving and also the balance between people when they go back and forth. It's the relation of people's first first houses and their selves. It's the in between, it's the back and forth. That's what the seventh house represents. Now, take a breather. But the next houses are where things get more mystical, so to speak. Um, these are the houses that I, I try to find my specialty in. These are my favorites. But um, without further ado, <laughs> we're going to go into the eighth house. The eighth house is the... Is the House that is ruled by Mars and Pluto. Another thing about the planets proportions with this, right? Before I get into it, every planet now for the rest of this video is going to be essentially a higher energy planet that has influence on our existence in a powerful way. Like I said, has influence in a powerful way. But... There are higher and octaves of energy. So everything I said prior has been things that are close to Earth. Things that are more relatable to the Earth experience. These things are on the outskirts. And this is where you generally find people that have otherworldly energy. And that's the, that's, I'm just going to keep it right there. But with that being said, the 8th house. The 8th house is ruled by Mars and Pluto. It represents rebirth. The death of ego and the death of ego. Esoteric knowledge was hidden beneath the veil. Raw passion, raw sexuality, binding of two forces, and things that happen behind closed doors. Let me stop. But um, <laughs> that's what the eighth house pretty much represents. And with that being said, the eighth house is the birthplace of Scorpio. It gets deeper when you look into it, but. I'm going to try to keep it just simple and basic and not make this video too long. Next thing I'm going to go into is the ninth house. The ninth house is ruled by Jupiter. With that being said, it represents wisdom, knowledge that has been acquired. The, the seeking of knowledge and acquiring the knowledge in the process. Broad horizon, horizons. What's the next big thing? Expansion, spirituality, higher knowledge and higher learning. And seeing through and seeing all in a way. Um, the um, omni, omniscient? Omniscient. I think it's omniscient. Omniscience is pretty much what the ninth house also helps represent. Um, this is the house that is the birthplace of Sagittarius. Next house. Next house is the tenth house. Now, the tenth house is ruled by Saturn and the Earth. With that being said, the 10th house represents achievement, acknowledged success, ambition and drive, self-restriction for greater development. So these are the people, or these are this is the energy, 10th house type of energy where it's like, I will make this sacrifice in order for me to achieve a higher goal. That's what the 10th house represents. But um, it also represents status to the public eye, achievement and fame through dedication, and it also represents a lot of money <laughs> like 10th house is like a house where you look to your 10th house if you want to like talk about your career and how to get a lot of money from your career the 10th house will definitely cue you in for that and um it's also your midheaven as well and the thing that i figured out about the midheaven is that the midheaven is essentially the energy of your higher self that connects with you but that's a whole nother video and we'll get there when it's time um <laughs> but this is the birthplace of the zodiac sign capricorn awesome now the 11th house the 11th house is also ruled by saturn but it has it's also co it's co-ruled by uranus right um i have a video on uranus already so if you don't know much about that check that out but 
it represents the outside looking in, right? The overriding of rules. It also represents friendship, mass communications. The internet is the best way to like, just think the internet. That's what the 11th house is. Um, it represents telepathy in a lot of ways. Like the telepathy between groups of people. That's the best way to put the 11th house. Um, the collective consciousness is also something that was born from the 11th house. As well as the idea of you are not alone in the universe. And I'm going to let you take that as it is. Like I said, another thing to expand upon another time. But this is the birthplace of Aquarius. And if you know anything about Aquarius or you've seen my Uranus video, you'll understand exactly what I mean when I say this. Cool. So the next part that we're going to go to is the 12th house, right? The 12th house is the final house. It is the Omega. And with that being said, it's ruled by Jupiter and Neptune. Now, the thing about Jupiter and Neptune is that, or the thing about the 12th house, I'm sorry, is essentially, it's the psychic nature of all emotion put together. It's the wisdom of emotion. It's the wisdom of these higher these vibrations that are almost inconceivable, but we're all able to understand and feel. This is the, the house of dreams, right? This is where your dreams even come from to begin with. It's also a representation of your subconscious mind. The things that we intrinsically feel, but are also intangible. This is the, the house of the higher heart um, within us. Another video for another time, like I said. But um, like the higher up energies, I have to like really break down over time. The se first seven, you have all the info for pretty much. The last four, I gotta break down another like in a separate time. But I'll, this is one on one, so let's keep it simple. Um, so with that being said, before I get too off topic, is that it's like yeah, it represents sleep, the paranormal, and like the things that. It's like, man, this is just the magic that people don't necessarily comprehend on a day-to-day -day basis. That's just the best way to put it. I just stopped talking at 22.22. But <laughs> um, I just went through this like a quick rundown of the 12 houses and the planets that are correlated with it. Now, keep in mind, the planets that I mentioned throughout this video, everything that I mentioned throughout this video correlates to that house and to those zodiac signs as well so the thing about it is that it's kind of a simple science once you understand those 12 houses those 12 signs and then those planets that correlate with it but then the first seven signs all of those planets that correlate with it are essentially very close to earth and more um, what's the word for easier to it's just easier to be understood on a regular basis level like anyone who even if you know astrology or don't know astrology you can understand everything I said for the first seven signs the last from the 8th house to the 12th house that's when you get the people that are generally more attuned to the unseen world and the unseen forces and that's when things get real meta real quick but um yeah so this is like i said astrology 101 um if you have any more questions or comments if you looked at your chart since then if you want to know how to look at your chart with the houses and the signs, leave some comments below. Hit the like button. Um, subscribe if you haven't. Show your friend. Tell them to subscribe if you haven't. And I don't know. It's kind of it right now. But um, yeah. So last thing. Like I said before at the beginning of this video, services are down below. The code Valentine, 33.3% off. I'm not going to do a lot of sales. But I just decided to do one for this time frame. Help me buy Jump Force. Let me stop. But uh, <laughs> anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this. And have a great Sunday, whatever day you watch this.
just I wish you the best from when you see this and onward. Period. Thank you so much for coming to watch this video. Chad the Maverick signing off. You enjoy your day, your week, your month, and your year. Peace.